very warm welcome. You're watching Melt. I'm Ritwika Gupta and today's episode is once again shot at home. We are still working from home. On the show today, we'll be in conversation with Sir Martin Sorel, Executive Chairman of S4 Capital, to understand how he's dealing with the current crisis and the impact it will have on the advertising business. Joining me today is Anand Rangaswamy, Editor of Melt. Hi, Anand. Anand, so why are we speaking to Sir Martin today? Uh, Ritwika, that's a very simple answer. Martin Sorel talks to more clients across the world than any other person in the communication business. So he gets a sense of the mood, he gets a sense of the economy, he gets a sense of finances, and he extrapolates to what the future might hold. He's a great trend watcher, even if uh, he doesn't admit it. He's probably the best new business executive in the world. So yeah, that's why I talk to him. Well, thanks, Anand. Let's have a look at the conversation. But here's informing our viewers that this entire interview was recorded on Skype. So the video might appear patchy in places. We apologize for that. Without further ado, let's get ready to melt with Sir Martin Sorel. Sir Martin, hello. Good to talk to you. Good to talk to you, Anna. In, in not good circumstances. So tell me, what is your normal day like today? Because it's not a normal day anymore for anybody. Um, well, it has become normal. My last visit was to uh, Stockholm with, with Google, to a Google conference there. Uh, and I've been, uh, I, I spent the rest of that week actually in the office. But then the, the landlord decided to deactivate the fobs uh, for right. entry into our office. So we're still paying rent, but we don't have access to the office. That's something we'll have to take up with the landlord uh, in due course. So I, I've been uh, locked here at home, uh, self-isolating for about the last, well, it'll be, this is the second week. And, and actually, I found it strangely productive, Anna, um, or maybe not so strangely. So not, not, not all time wasted on uh, breakfast or lunch or dinner or traveling, needless traveling in between. And, and that's one of the permanent shifts that I think we're going to see. I think we'll see uh, I see CAN has been cancelled for this year. Uh, I, I think the organisers should think very hard about the format for 2021. I, I, I said before, CAN in uh, June uh, is not the ideal place for a, a world advertising festival. And I think the whole thing should be rethought uh, as a part of what we're going through. But you're seeing a lot of shift, sure. I think. Yeah. So uh, what, what else do you do uh, in, in the day? I get up as normal at about uh, 6, 6.30. Uh, and then I usually start my day at 8, uh, as normal, actually, yeah, but not, not with a breakfast or seeing somebody, but straight into Skypes or Zooms or Microsoft Teams uh, or, or communication and phone calls. Uh, and then it's pretty much uh, full on uh, because we're heavily involved in the U.S. Uh, and the West Coast. You know, and I'm eight hours or five hours ahead of the east and west coast. It carries on the the the, the momentum carries on really to about eight or nine at night. So it's a pretty much a full on day. And I'm not joking when I say I think it's been much more efficient use of time. And I think another one of the things that we're going to see is when we come back out of this, and we can talk about that in a second about when that might be. Uh, I think the patterns of work, both at home and in the office, are going to change quite radically and, and quite rightly so. The technology is absolutely superb. Uh, I've uh, been involved in a, a number of um, seminars, uh, conference calls, etc., using the technology. The best technology I've seen actually is coming out of Harvard Business School with their virtual classrooms. Um, you get these phenomenal technological links which make you think about why it is that we spent so much time money uh, and burning the climate uh, by by going to various parts of the world those those online conferences uh, are as good as being there and in fact they enable many more people to participate so you know answer to your question about you know what's the day like the, the day is probably in a way uh, and this is sadly the case, obviously, more absorbing and more interesting than using, use, than usual. I mean, managing through a crisis or trying to manage through a crisis uh, is really difficult. And this crisis, and uh, as you well know, in, in India, with a, a complete lockdown on the country, 
you know, 1.3 billion people. I mean, it's extraordinary to think that from afar that India is locked down. This crisis is like no other. It's not like 2008. It's not like 9-11. It's not like the dot-com bubble, bubble 2.0. This is very different. It's most akin, and I don't know this, but people say, to wartime. So this is a, a shutdown uh, and a crisis that uh, is very difficult to manage. The levels of uncertainty here are huge. I mean, CEOs use uncertainty as an excuse, you know, for lack of visibility. We often hear in our industry, the leaders of uh, the uh, the holding companies, for example, saying they, they don't know. Well, they do know uh, often, but they are, they're frightened or unwilling to say so. Is that the same case, with government? It, well, yes, it's the same for government. I mean, it, it, neither the government, the health services, uh, or indeed businesses know. That's why the, 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 the framework, the, the timeline has been so concertinaed. I mean, many companies that we talk to are just looking at the next four weeks. Uh, and liquidity, obviously, particularly for small and medium-sized businesses, and this would be the, the case in India, uh, to a hyper degree, are focused on the next four, eight, 12 weeks. I mean, Q2 is the crisis quarter. I mean, this quarter, uh, I've described it elsewhere as being a bloodbath, and that's probably putting it dr- too, too dramatically, or maybe it's literally true. Uh, it's a terrible thing to say. But having, having said that, this is the, the, the real crisis quarter. I think after Q2, Q3 will be very difficult too, but not as difficult. And then I think, I'm not forecasting the sunny uplands uh, of Q4, yes. but I think Q4 will start to see some recovery. If you look at the patterns of change in China, and of course that's a, a very Next difficult yes. co- comparison to an in India, uh, which is a much more democratic country, obviously, but you know, an autocratic country like China has managed to shut down uh, and then sort of reboot within a three-month period. Now, applying that to the U.S. and Western Europe might be inaccurate. I think it will take longer because U.S. governments, U.K. governments, Western European governments have been slower to lock down than others. They've been slower to test generally. So. It's subject to continuous change, but this is a massive challenge for all of us. Uh, so, and, so you know, coming back to my coming back to my day, Anand, uh, it's it it has its interesting aspects. So, tell me, Sir Martin, I spoke to Richard Edelman a few days ago, and he was saying that it's a time for companies and CEOs to rethink their roles in the world. You know, so. How, how are you going to change uh, once we bounce back, whenever, that, whenever well, we do uh, bounce that, back? That, 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 that sounds like Richard. Um, yeah, it is, I, it is I'm Richard. A little bit, I, I'm a little bit more absorbed with uh, the day-to-day. So right. I'm a little bit more focused, uh, a little bit more concerned about um, uh, S4. You know, it's 2,500 people. That's uh, interestingly, uh, to date, uh, thank goodness, uh, we have not had uh, a, a lot, to our knowledge, of uh, direct incidents or concerns. I mean, the number of people in our organization that have suffered from the virus have been remarkably few. Um, in fact, I would say in the client communities, uh, I've heard of more cases than I have in our own organization. So uh, despite what Richard says, uh, I'm much more focused on and making sure that our people and their families, so if it's 2,500 people, it's probably about 7,500 to 10,000 people who rely for their livelihoods uh, on S4 as a company and its content and programmatic constituent verticals. And that's what I'm primarily concerned about. The secondary, the second concern is making sure that we respond to our clients and their change needs now, just like our people are working from home, most of them, uh, we're up and running, back up and running in China, in, in Shanghai, but generally uh, in the West and North and South America, we're on lockdowns. 
Uh, so we're working from home and our people have adapted very well from that. I'm not surprised, actually, as some others have expressed, uh, that um, working from, from home has been uh, surprisingly efficient. Uh, given the nature of our operation, it's purely digital. Our people yeah. are uh, uh, used to and well versed in digital techniques. So working in the office or working from home, in a sense, is it's no different. So, sure. so this, yeah, exactly. Now, I think one of the results of it, coming back to Richard's um, look at the future, and I think this is where we should focus more, is what does this mean for our people? It means I think they will do more from home, but when they're in the office, they will use more technology. I think there are three levels of impact uh, that we should think about rather than reassessing our roles. Uh, the first is what's going to happen to consumers, and consumers are going to accelerate their use of technology. They're going to accelerate their use of digital media. They're going to accelerate their use of digital media for online shopping uh, and contact uh, and communications and payments and everything of that nature. So that's at one level. At a second level, media owners, and you know, well, even in a place, a country like India, where television is still so dominant, where linear TV and free-to-air is still so dominant, that is going to change too, and linear TV and analog media are going to come under more and more intense pressure. We, we've seen, so it's an acceleration of that trend as well, we've seen FMCGs, for example, trimming or cutting their budgets already and shifting more money into digital because it's on a cost per uh, C, uh, CPM, CPM basis uh, or, or on the basis of performance, uh, it's become more and more effective and absolute costs are less. And of course, live events, uh, as we know, cricket in, in India and other events, Wimbledon and the Olympics and the Euros have all been uh, you, cancelled. You, 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 you forgot the Premier League. Can we see your T-shirt for that? that? Well, the T-shirt, the we have to get up, I guess, for yeah. that. You have yeah. to see. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. Is, the, as, I, as, I, as I was getting up this morning, looking at my wardrobe, and you said to me, where uh, I've got a, a, a cricket shirt also, but um, where, where this popped out of the wardrobe, you know, this, this terrible pilgrimage that um, my, 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 my sons and my grandsons made to Madrid um, a year or so ago for the Euro Cup and, and when Spurs failed against Liverpool. Anyway, uh, consumers <laughs> are going to change, yeah. media owners are going to change, and last but not least, enterprise managers are going to change. Before COVID and before the oil price shock, uh, the, the economy was still in reasonably good shape. And I think enterprise managers were concerned about changing the status quo and taking a hit on cost uh, in, in the course of digital transformation. After COVID or in the course of COVID, I think they will be more used to and more prone to digital transformation. So the basic point, uh, and uh, in relation to your question about thinking about the future, is rather than think about our own roles, I, I think we should focus on what's going to happen with our people, what's going to happen with consumers, and last but not least, what's going to happen with enterprises. And I think what we're going to see is a continuous acceleration of the trends that we've seen before COVID. This is a crisis like no other. Um, in fact, you know, we may talk about what you what you're, you're reading? There's a very interesting book by a guy called John Barry about the the flu pandemic of 1918. Worth a quick read. A uh, read uh, in in terms of looking at, at what what happened many years ago. You know, uh, uh, over a, just over a hundred years ago, with probably the the nearest equivalent to what we're seeing in modern times. Uh, and looking at that and looking at the, the implications of it. So I think that's what we should think about. Obviously, our roles have changed in the sense that we're thinking in a much broader context. This is not just a financial crisis. It's a healthcare crisis. It's a general crisis that affects everybody. Uh, so so what it's like no other that we've seen. Sure. Now, on another shifting gears, what books are you reading yeah. now? What podcasts are you listening to? Uh, firstly, Bob Iger's book, uh, The Ride of My Life, uh, I think is really an interesting book. Uh, Phil Knight's book, Shoe Dog, 
uh, on the growth and development, the early growth and development of Nike, I think is, and then, you know, at times like this, I think it, it, it's good to go back to reality. And I like Warren Buffett's, what I call Warren Buffett's Bible, uh, Benjamin Graham's book on uh, investing, which I think grounds you uh, in valuation uh, and valuation strength. And then I mentioned Dean Coons's book, uh, and then the book by John Barry uh, on the flu epidemic uh, of 1918, which again, uh, I mean, is remarkable because uh, things don't change. You know, uh, right. isolation and the way these things are treated and the pressures on the system are sadly very similar. We don't learn sometimes uh, from our experiences in the past. So those books, I think, are sort of interesting in, a, in, in today's context. And what music are you listening to? Do you have time for music or? Well, I, uh, well you know, when I was um, very young, uh, when I was in my teens, you know, those were the days when we had vinyls. Uh, and there used to be these wonderful um, LPs, uh, Blue Note LPs, uh, jazz LPs. Uh, and it, the shop was called Doug Dobell's. I think it was 76 to 78 Charing Cross Road. I don't think right. it exists anymore. I may be wrong. And um, I used to collect um, jazz LPs, the latest right. Monk, Miles, Miles yeah. Young, Miles Davis. John, Miles Davis. John Coltrane. Yeah, I mean, uh, Chet Baker and Jerry Mulligan, uh, Herbie Hancock, all these people. I mean, the great. So at times like this, I sort of go back to, I wouldn't describe them necessarily as my roots. I used to think that the jazz, uh, jazz players, um, Chet Baker being a, I mean, if you listen to Chet Baker blowing a trumpet, it's quite extraordinary uh, what he managed to do. I mean, he sadly died, I think, at the age of 29 in Paris uh, of supposedly drug uh, overdoses and alcoholism. But when you listen to his uh, lyrical playing, maybe you understand that uh, it's taking drugs that drive people to, um, to perform at that level. But um, no, so I go back to those roots. Uh, uh, right. And uh, really, when at uh, times like this, and podcasts, uh, I've always liked uh, Scott Galloway and uh, Kara Swisher's podcast. Right. Uh, there's um, there's a very interesting podcast that's called Pivot, I think. Uh, there's a very interesting podcast on uh, called How to Fail. I think by a woman called Elizabeth Day, uh, which has, has some interesting stuff on coronavirus uh, at the moment. Um, Alain de Botton and one or two others. That's that's uh, uh, very interesting. HBR uh, Harvard Business Review's yes, idea cast is is really interesting. Uh, so those are some of the things that I listen to. But uh, but you know the the pace of the day uh, is so strong. I mean, there's a lot of communication that every day we have a a meeting of our sort of crisis group, uh, what we call our CCG Corona Virus Crisis Group. There's eight people on that. Uh, we had a, a, a big call with uh, eight, eight locations uh, a day or so ago. We'll probably do that on, on a regular basis, too. So I, I think the pace of the day means that on the weekend uh, that continues to a lesser extent. But we're still keeping in touch all over the weekend. Netflix, Amazon Prime, uh, you know, certainly uh, Apple TV, seen some in, you know, bombshell was uh, certainly interesting, uh, but you know, I I I look at um, I look at the content on Netflix, and I I crave for uh, things as good as The Wire. Uh, yeah. Seen Messiah, Messiah recently, Fowler recently, uh, all good stuff. But you know, I go back. The Wire still continues to be. I think it was a uh, Idris Elba's uh, first real yes, sort of success. One very, one very interesting uh, Netflix uh, film recently, Unorthodox, right. about the I, I uh, seen that. Hasidic, Hasidic community uh, in Brooklyn uh, and a young woman uh, breaking away from that or attempt. Well, she does break away from it in the end, break, giving the plot away, but breaking away from that. That's sort of interesting and but a, probably a bit parochial for the, to me. Fantastic, Sir Martin. So, uh, uh, Going by what you're saying, we won't travel too much, but uh, we, we've got all the tools. We've got Skype, we've got Zoom, we've got uh, MS Teams, and we'll be in touch. And uh, yes. I hope to talk to you soon in better times, both 
soon. Okay, okay. Anna, keep, stay healthy, keep safe, and to all my colleagues uh, in India, to Robbie I'm, and Koran, yes. and, and my colleagues, give them my love and uh, best wishes, and to all my ex-colleagues uh, in WPP, uh, you know, of which there are probably, what, 14, 15,000 of them, though maybe ex Kantar it's a little bit less, but we still <laughs> right. main, main, maintain the connection. Sure. Uh, I, I hope they, they stay healthy and stay well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Samad. Thank you. And that's a wrap on this episode of Melt. Do follow us on social media. Our handle is ready to melt. You can also stay informed on what's happening in the world of advertising and marketing with our daily Melt update on our website readytomelt.com. And I'll see you next week, same time, same place. Goodbye. <laughs>